Greyhounds are bred for just one thing, speed. 25-5-4-0-75. But not everyone's a winner. So what makes a top dog? How much is down to training? And how much is in their genes? For centuries, inheritance seemed like one of life's mysteries. Just how are characteristics like speed, size and colour passed down from one generation to the next? In the last 50 years, genetics has revealed that all living things on our planet share the same chemical code, a recipe for life. Human beings, plants and animals have different ingredients, but the recipes are very similar. A third of the recipe for a human being is the same as that for a tree. And we share two-thirds of our recipe with frogs. The basic building block for all life is the cell. The tools it needs to carry out its work are inside. These organelles vary depending on whether the cell forms part of a leaf in a plant, the skin of an animal, or the brain of a human being. But amazingly, virtually every cell contains the recipe for the entire body. The recipe is spelled out in a chemical code. Each line in the recipe is a gene describing a particular characteristic. The chemical code is in the cell's nucleus on long curled up molecules called chromosomes. When it comes to the genes of greyhounds, John Simpson's an expert, but he isn't a scientist. I've been breeding dogs for over 20 years now. I was a professional footballer for seven years, played for Tottenham Hotspur until I broke my leg and was out of the game for a couple of years. When I came back, I was too old to do it, and dogs really have filled a void in my life. And it's, uh, it's been like a drug since then. Gone from, you know, just from owning a couple of dogs to, uh, to now having uh, over 100 dogs. <laughs> This litter are all brothers and sisters, among the fourth generation that John has bred. He's got the knack of selecting dogs with winning characteristics to be parents for the next generation. A good greyhound's got a good intelligent head, nice long nose, and what I like is a nice wide back, the same width at the shoulders as well as the back. That's where the power comes from, the back. Head like a snake, neck like a drake, a back like a bream, a tail like a rat, a feet like a cat. That's an old poem from the 1930s. The first prize for a derby is £50,000. If you do get it right and you do win the derby, you must have bred properly. Then obviously you've got yourself a, a flying machine worth a lot of money at stud. Um, he'll probably start off with four or five hundred pound per mating, twice a week, as a hundred times a year. So it comes to a nice view, Bob. This museum is stuffed full with canine history. And it proves that all the dog breeds we know today are artificial. Selective breeding by humans has completely changed dogs' appearance. All dogs are descended from a wolf, probably a nation wolf, which is the smallest of the wolves. They were probably first taken by man as a litter of wolf cubs, with a view to eating them, with a view to using them as pets, with a view to using them as a bed warmer, or with a view to training them to hunt. Various breeds were developed about three or 4,000 years BC. Some other breeds or types were developed in the Middle Ages, and most of our breeds go back over the last 120 years.
Some breeds of dog are very similar to what they were hundreds of years ago. The Saluki is a case in point. But the modern uh, collie is probably smaller than it used to be. And it's probably got a longer head than it used to have. Today's dogs look different, partly because they eat different food to their ancestors. But they also have different genes. Some characteristics, for example, coat colour, are exclusively genetic. Other features are partly genetic and partly environmental. For example, the size of a dog is in part controlled by its genes and in part controlled by the way that it is fed too much food and they will be fat. But that's a temporary aberration. A genetic change is a permanent change to the species. And over the last 120 years, we have selected for some things which have led to permanent changes in particular breeds. The racing greyhound is therefore selected solely for ability to run fast. If a greyhound runs faster than its contemporaries, it is used in the breeding program. So greyhounds have got faster and faster. And this was one of the fastest. Bally Regan Bob died in 1994, already a legend on the track. But before he died, he was mated many times. Breeders have made sure his genes live on in thousands of greyhounds today. All right, this is uh, my office. A few trophies and uh, pictures of some of the successes we've had over the, the past 10 years. There's a picture there of Shalane Princess. He's probably the best uh, dog I've ever had, I should think. Here we have the books of all the dogs. It shows us the parents, and we then can build up a little family tree. It then gives us a much better idea of what the puppies should and could do in the future. This is Bruno, one of John's youngest dogs. As yet, he's never seen a racetrack. He might be another Ballyregan Bob, but that depends on exactly which characteristics he's inherited. Every characteristic in a dog is controlled by a pair of genes. One from the mother and one from the father. Often the gene from both parents is the same. Two genes for short hair will make a short haired puppy. And two genes for long hair will make a long-haired puppy. There's no conflict. But when the genes are different, a system comes into play to work out whether the long or the short hair gene will set the hair length. Some genes are stronger than others. They're called dominant genes, and the weak ones are called recessive. Dominant genes tend to hide the effect of recessive genes, sometimes hiding them completely. So if the gene for long hair is completely dominant, a puppy will have long hair, whether it inherits the long hair gene from either one of its parents or from both. The only way it can have short hair is to inherit a short hair gene from its father and a short hair gene from its mother. This means that the effect of recessive genes is often covered up but the recessive genes are still there and they're passed on from one generation to the next. With genes for every characteristic of an animal, thousands of pairs of genes are matched up when a baby animal forms. The end result is a complex mix of characteristics from the mother and characteristics from the father. To complicate things further, very, very occasionally the genetic machinery makes a mistake. A chemical mix-up creates a mutation a new gene that never existed before. Sometimes a mutation is good for a species, but other times it creates problems. Barnaby is recovering from a cancerous tumour. He's come to the Animal Health Trust for a checkup. Okay, sit, lie down. To keep him still during an x-ray, he has to be anaesthetised. This dog is um, an old English sheepdog, a six-year-old male, and he's had a tumour removed from around his bottom um, region here. One of the problems with tumours is not only 
the local disease where the tumour was, but also the ability to spread elsewhere. And so what we are doing now is to take some x-rays of the chest and the abdomen to see if there is any evidence of spread. In dogs, as in people, some diseases seem to run in families. It's possible that Barnaby inherited a genetic mutation which increases his chance of developing cancer. This is the chest x-ray. Uh, the lung field is here with the heart sitting in the middle of it. And in this area of the lungs, there is no evidence of any other, other tumours showing. The abdomen picture, again, uh, we have the backbone here, the various organs, kidney, bladder, within the abdomen. And again, there's no other abnormal structures suggestive of uh, any tumour. So that's, uh, those x-rays are very good. Vets aren't sure that dog cancer is definitely linked to inherited faulty genes, but many other diseases are. Yorkshire Terriers suffer from badly formed bones. Cocker Spaniels are prone to ear and kidney disease. And pedigree bulldogs' heads are so big that most can't be born naturally. It takes a surgical operation. Every one of these dog breeds is associated with an inherited disease caused by recessive mutant genes. It happens because of their breeding. In nature, all kinds of dogs would mate with each other, so it's unlikely that two parents mating would both pass on the same recessive gene to a puppy. But to keep pedigree breeds pure, only a small number of dogs are mated together. Inbreeding is the result. Pedigree dogs might look attractive, but they're much more likely to inherit recessive genes that can lead to crippling disease. Inbreeding can happen in any animal. There are more than 350 different inherited diseases in dogs, um, ranging from uh, mutations which lead to blindness, mutations leading to deafness, um, some metabolic disorders which poison the animals. The food they take in poisons them because they're not able to clear it. Skeletal problems such that they can't walk properly. There are a huge range. Virtually every part of the body is affected. What we're interested in studying these diseases and developing genetic screening tests. Screening tests allow breeders to identify animals with faulty genes. By avoiding breeding from them, it should be possible to make sure the faulty gene, and so the inherited disease, isn't passed on. The tests work because scientists are steadily cracking the chemical code for genes. Blood contains some cells with nuclei. It's possible to separate out the chromosomes from them and explore their structure. Chromosomes are made from a material called DNA. It's a complex molecule in the shape of a spiral staircase. The steps on the spiral are made from one of four chemical bases, four letters in a genetic alphabet. It's these steps that spell out the letters of the genes. I'm setting up an experiment here to look at a genetic marker in a number of dog DNA samples we've got. Genetic markers are chemicals that reveal where the code letters for each gene start and finish along a chromosome. The markers show up as coloured lines on a computer screen. They make it possible to compare DNA from several dogs alongside each other. If one of the dogs is known to have a faulty gene, looking for that gene's markers in DNA from other dogs can reveal whether or not they also carry the same inherited disease. Well, these are the 15 DNA samples we've been looking at, and the different colours show us the different genetic markers. Now, for a screening test, whenever we saw this size band, and we would say, well, this individual is a carrier, this individual is a carrier, and so on. Now, although this is a relatively new technique in dogs, it's been used for many years in humans. And surprisingly, there's actually quite a lot of similarity between the chromosomes of humans and dogs, and between humans and other mammalian species. This means that we can use a lot of the information generated from the human work to help us locate disease genes in the dog. And I expect that over the next four or five years, we will have developed 10, 15 new genetic tests for dogs and we'll be breeding much healthier dogs in the future.
Right. This is the ultimate test. All the breeding and the uh, all the hard work. They're 11 months old now, the pups. Now we're going to see if they chase. If they chase. So well and good. As yet, no genetic test can spot winning greyhounds. This is a big day for Bruno. His first visit to a racetrack. Bruno. He's got some catching up to do. Good boy. That's pretty good anyway. He's, he's showed a little bit of interest anyway. <laughs> Genetics can only take a young dog so far. Now it's time to get some experience. Let's try and get him. I think get him interested in seeing the hair. You can hear it. Good boy, Bruno. Here. Here comes him. Bruno. Here. Good boy. Here. 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 moves he's chased but obviously not fast enough but not too disappointed with that though. He's in the first couple of times you don't really want to give him too much. Just give him a little taste and next week he'll be a completely different dog. Selective breeding makes it possible to breed happier, healthier animals, but it can also be abused. Chicken rice, chicken rice. These pictures were filmed secretly by the RSPCA. What we see here is a fight between two American pit bull terriers. These are dogs which have been trained and bred to fight. They've got natural uh, strength, agility, stamina, and they've got aggression. Police raids have put the organizers of dog fights behind bars, and it's now illegal to breed certain dangerous dogs. But was this dog really born dangerous? When so many useful things can be done with dogs, why, why do we have to have activities like this? Genetics raises many questions about the future. Should dangerous people be allowed to have children? Who will decide what is or isn't a dangerous characteristic in humans? Do we want pedigree people? Cracking the code for life has given us the power and the responsibility to shape future generations. <laughs>